Okay, great. So now that we're recording, I'll do a short recap. So we'll talk about startups, the early stage, the beginning. What are the assets that we need? I'd like to hear from you also, what is relevant to you? Uh, how to do those things, those assets, those actions that startup needs to do in the early stage, how to do it right from the start, uh, how we view outsourcing and the power that it gives you, the agility that it gives to your startups. And we'll discuss some examples uh, that we brought to you, how startups are outsourcing, what they're using it for, uh, and also how to do it right, how to outsource in the best way, because uh, there is a way to do it. And there is a playbook that is being written every day. Uh, and the first thing that I would like to ask you is, what are the assets your startups need? What do you need from the starts? What digital assets, what solid assets does your startup have? And here I would love to see some answers. Please write it in the sticky notes on the board. Yeah, so you can just join us via the link and then um, you can uh, make sure that you come to what are the assets your startup need. Take a sticky and fill in things that you are needing as a startup right now. And I will put a timer for one minute. All right, time's up. Ellie, what have you seen? Okay. So I see different things here. I see some things that are tangible, some things that I see a Miro and Ocean account. So we see some softwares that we're using, a shared drive, also a tool uh, that we need to manage our tasks and, and our people. Uh, I see something interesting like Scrum task management. Uh, so it's either to have it in place or to have a professional that does it or to have a software that we use it. Uh, team time tracker, uh, money, that's always true. Uh, startup need, need, needs money to run because uh, you need to pay salaries and you need to pay for a lot of things. The cool thing, by the way, that, that I'll try to mention as much as I can today is that today, more than any day, more than yesterday and more than a year ago and more than 10 years ago, there is more and more things that startups can get uh, for free or at uh, deferred fees. Um, social media art assets, I see logo, uh, I see formatting of blogs and newsletters. So there's a lot of things here that really relate uh, to what we're gonna talk about. And here, if you can open the hidden slide. Yes. Okay, so it's just some of the things and obviously there's always more, but when we develop our startup, we have an idea and we need to bring it to some realization. So we're building our MVP, our minimum viable product. Uh, we need a look and feel for our startup, something that differentiate us from a competition if we have it. If it's a good idea, we probably have the competition and we need something from the beginning that people will know that it's us also when we grow and when we develop and in two years and three years and five years and 10 years and 20 years. We usually need investors. And by the way, if we're coming with our own capital, we're also investors. We're our own investors. We're investing our capital, our money, our time. Uh, so we need to reach those investors. We need to know who's relevant for us. And not every person with money or every institution with money is the right investor uh, for us. So we need investors that are fitting us and uh, th that are good partners for us. Uh, and we need clients and partners. So sometimes it's direct clients. There's a lot of types of startups and, and you probably heard a lot about it from B2C to B2B to B2G. Um, and sometimes we sell our product directly. Sometimes we do it through partners and sometimes there's complex partnerships. We need to find those people, reach those people. We need to do the right market research. Uh, and in order to grow and sometimes to get investments, we need to show interest from those partners and from the clients. And once we got the budget, what are we doing with this? So a lot of time we can raise uh, money or we can come with initial capital. When we come to raise the next round, in order to scale, uh, we need to show how we're using our money. Are we efficient? Did we prove efficiency so far? Can we scale our project or what we're doing? Uh, so all of this is things that it's good to define and to understand as early as possible. And with this, we can uh, start our journey and we can start growing. Let's go to the next slide and we'll do an introduction uh, to Fiverr. Uh, 
and its history. So Fiverr, it's a global marketplace that connects freelancers and businesses for digital services. Our mission statement is we change how the world works together. And I saw some great mission statements uh, here. So it relates to the um, why, how, and what. And I hope you all know what I'm talking about. If not, we have some reference uh, at the end. Uh, so the why, how, and what. So we want to change uh, how the world works together. And we're doing it through, uh, through connections. We're connecting businesses to freelancers. Let's go to the next. Now, Fiverr operates in more than 160 countries. Pretty much from the start, uh, we were aimed to international markets. So the company was uh, formed in Israel, uh, but the audience was global. And I think that's the case also with a lot of the startups and, and the entrepreneurs that are here today. You're starting somewhere, but today, pretty much from the start, you're aiming globally. Uh, that's what we did. Today, we also have physical offices around the world, uh, in the US, around Europe, in, uh, in uh, Central America, uh, and representatives around the world. So Fiverr connects between businesses to freelancers who offer their services in digital categories. We have more than 500 different categories. Here you can see just some of it. So from graphic design to video animation, uh, to software development, to marketing, to strategy, to, uh, to market research, uh, and it's constantly growing. And the interesting thing that some of the things we know that it's already a category and some things it's coming organically. We see services that are opening in new categories, in new things uh, as different trends uh, evolve and develop around the world. And the cool thing that we see it right away on our platform. So let's continue. So to recap, our mission is to change how the world works together. The company was founded in 2010. So we're 11 years, uh, 11 and a half years uh, from when we funded Fiverr or when Fiverr was funded by uh, Micha Kaufman and uh, Shai Winninger. And uh, two and a half years ago, even less, two years ago and, and several months in June, we IPO'd in the New York Stock Exchange. You can see that the numbers here are uh, relevant to 2020. So since then we grew more and the company today is global. Let's continue. And one thing that I can tell you now, now you're in the stage where you're innovative. When you came up with a new idea, with a new solution, with a new way to do something, you have to stay innovative constantly, all the time. And there, there are some great examples to this. Um, and let's go to the next slide. Here are some companies, some giants that we see around us today, wherever we go traveling. Uh, in most of the countries, we can see representations of those companies. But there's a cool thing to understand that most of those companies, they didn't invent their market. They just created something super efficient. So there was share rides before Uber, there was co-working spaces before WeWork, there was online um, retail before Amazon, but they made it efficient. So we see ourselves as doing the same thing with doing business with freelancing, with hiring a freelance online, with hiring someone to support and uh, advance your business with hiring digital services. But you do have to bring some innovation. And since you develop your initial product, you have to constantly continue innovating. So a great example is Amazon, I think, that are constantly reinventing themselves. Uh, and, and there's a lot of materials to, to read about it. It's not something that we're gonna talk about it uh, now, but that's a great advice, I think. Go and read some of the things that Jeff Bezos write how he uh, keeps the innovative, the startup spirit within a huge organization like Amazon. Let's continue. The way we're trying to do it, and I just brought you some of the products that we developed uh, along our journey, uh, is things like new features to our product, packaging, leveling system to our users, a mobile app. It's not something that you have necessarily from the start. Sometimes you start with the mobile app and then you go to the desktop version uh, and, and it's obviously individual to every business. But then we started developing new products like Fiverr Learn, new offerings like Fiverr Pro, purchasing uh, or buying, acquiring companies and then integrating them into our platform, developing again, new, new ways to offer services, new 
types of collaboration for our users, uh, new indicators, and uh, again, new offerings and new programs for our sellers. This is what we did, but if we would not continue constantly to develop those new products, those new offerings, as innovative as you are, in two years, in three years, somebody will be more innovative than you. Somebody will come, uh, rip everything uh, that you did and continue from where uh, you brought the market to. You know that sometimes the first ones, the, 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 the first people to, to start something, they're not necessarily the ones who will enjoy the success. It's sometimes the seconds and the third, unless you're constantly innovative and doing it, uh, and doing it in the right way. Uh, so remember this, this uh, listing, okay? Let's take one more look. There's a lot of different products here. We'll discuss also uh, how we built some of them. Let's continue. So how do you develop new features or pushing your main feature uh, when you're working in your startups? You're probably in the stage where you're thinking or already deciding how to expand, how to grow, how do you gonna hire your next talent? Are you hiring your next talent? So there's a lot of concepts in our head that some of them are really pretty much obsolete. So let's look at the way that we view the, um, the traditional way, the old way of employment and the new way. Oh, sorry, right, before that, uh, before that, it's a, it's, a good, uh, it's a good thing to do. Let's think, where is the most interesting exotic place we work from? So let's take a minute to do it. So the question is, what is the most interesting place you have worked from? I see a neighbor here who worked at the beach at the Maldives, pretty close to the beach at Sri Lanka. <laughs> Time's up. Okay, so we can see some interesting places, locations, uh, in countries that people uh, worked from. But what's interesting to see is that today, more or less, we can work, uh, we can work from, <laughs> from anywhere, even from here, even from uh, where we see the smiley at. So we'll discuss in a second why is that. Let's go to the next slide. So the way we view traditional workplace and traditional way of working to the future and the future of work is the following and why it's important to understand because this will influence the, the strategy and, and the efficiency of how you're going to recruit your people, how you're going to work with people, how you're going to work with the talent uh, for your startup, for your project. So in the traditional workplace, it used to be, we were thinking about long-term employment. We used to work from the office constantly uh, it was local teams. My team was around me uh, in the same physical space. We used to work offline a lot. Uh, we used to work full-time, receive a monthly salary. It, it wasn't based on the need in our work now, if we're picking with projects or not. Um, and this notion of studying when you're young, uh, start school, because then and take a profession, not necessarily that you care about or interests you, but something that is standard so you can get stability and you can find a stable uh, workplace. Now, the, let's say the 30s plus, 20s plus definitely are viewing things differently. So uh, there's a lot of uh, experience building work that is sometimes freelancing. Sometimes you work in a certain place or even several places at the same time because you want to build your experience, build your portfolio and build your knowledge, uh, you can work from anywhere. So there's digital nomads, there's co-working spaces. It, it's interesting to see with Fiverr how when Fiverr just started, freelancing was popular, but wasn't as near as popular as it is now. And it used to be a lot of times something that you do between jobs, between works. It wasn't as prestigious now. Now, for whoever wrote that he worked on the beach from the Maldives and all those different places and co-working spaces, you can find a lot of freelancers that you can't even hire full-time because they won't do it. And why is that? Because they can work from anywhere. They don't wanna compromise their style of living. Uh, and especially when they're young and traveling uh, and have the talent, 
they don't need to go to work somewhere from nine to five. They work from anywhere. They just need their computer, which also they can get access to internet more or less anywhere now. And they can work for high rates and uh, deliver a great job. Uh, and they don't need to compromise and be uh, stuck, right? Stuck at one place. Uh, so for some people, it's a great solution. Uh, you're working digitally a lot. There's a lot of things you can do on the computer because there's a lot of tools. There's tools like Miro. There's, uh, there's companies like us, like Fiverr. There's uh, uh, Google Docs and a lot of other, and Slack and a lot of uh, communication uh, softwares where you can communicate with teams when you can manage everything. Uh, and now there's also the notion you want to get paid for results. And we see even companies doing it for nine to five jobs uh, but definitely when you work uh, with people project-based, you as an employee, uh, you would like to get paid for great results. And the employer, a lot of time, likes to pay for projects. Uh, and there is also the notion of constantly studying, getting new ex expertise, especially in startups and in our world, in the tech world. It doesn't matter what you studied in many cases. It matters what you know and your experience. Um, and the main thing is not stability anymore. It's for, for fulfillment. To, to feel that you're fulfilling your life, that you're living the life that you want, that you're accomplishing your goals. And a lot of time it has to do also with traveling and with living the lifestyle that you want. Let's continue. So we talked about why now, but the main, the main thing to understand, it's because it's possible. Uh, when I traveled South America, I went to South America for seven months. We used to look for Skype cafes. It was called Skype was the dominating software to communicate internationally via internet. And we needed Skype cafes with physical internet connection so we can call home, talk to our friends. And we didn't even think about working in those cafes because the internet wasn't that quick. Now you can work from anywhere. There's satellite internet, every beach more or less, or every guest house has stable, pretty good connection, internet connection. And in the next couple of years, it's gonna be amazing. So we already see this because we have the technology. So one thing is the internet. The other thing is all the tools, the collaboration tools, what we're doing right now. We're having our presentation integrated into Miro. We can go and follow it through Zoom. It's, it's pretty amazing. For us, it's already natural, especially with Corona speeding things up. Uh, but we need, to, we need to think that this is an advance that didn't happen even in, in in 10 years, what didn't happen in 10 years happened in two years or, or equivalent. So think about it, think about it, uh, what you can use for your startups, for your ideas, what opportunities does it open for you? Let's continue. And when, when we're looking at this way of, are we hiring people? Are we hiring people full-time job? Are we engaging freelancers? So the idea behind our marketplace, behind Fiverr, is to have the experience when you go online to purchase a service that you need. It could be a lot of those assets that we discussed. It could be a logo, it could be a brand book, it could be an implementation of a software. In the end, it's a service. So how Micha, our CEO says, you buy a service as if you were buying on Amazon. You go, you find the service and you have all the information and the indications that you need to just go and easily buy it. Let's continue. There's a big chart here, but I want you to get the bottom line from here. Handling freelancers and handling uh, a lot of different uh, freelancers and, and workforce, the way it worked online, and here I'm coming back to reducing friction in an existing industry. So uh, if anyone here hired a freelancer, you know that there's always a negotiation. Or if anyone worked as a freelancer, you know that there's always a negotiation. Yeah, you'd like me to, to do this webinar, how about you pay me 20% now, 50 uh, along the way, and then another 30 or 20 uh, at the end of it? Let's prepare a presentation for it. Are, we, are you paying me ahead or later? Uh, how much time do I have to do it? All those questions, all this negotiation, if we do it with every freelancer, it's limiting our time. When we have a product, and this is how we were thinking, how we're making uh, the life of our customers easier. Uh, we, when we take all this away, and it's all visible and you know what you're paying for and you know what you're getting, you're reducing the friction uh, from it. And this opens uh, a whole new bandwidth of uh, capabilities of working with freelancers. Let's continue. 
So we want to also show some practical uh, things. When you choose your freelancers, here we're showing it on how to do it on Fiverr. It's relevant anywhere. And you can also uh, implement it when you're, uh, when you're uh, giving tasks to your employees or where you're choosing employees, but definitely with your freelancers. So you're using the search on the platform. You're using the filters to find exactly the person that you need. And then there are several things. Don't just choose someone. Look at their work samples. You have the indications. Uh, the next thing, uh, in a second we'll move, uh, look at their feedback. Look what other buyers wrote uh, about them. That's the advantage of a big platform. And think about it. It's pretty much the same at every platform that you're using to choose your hotels, to choose your flights, to choose uh, your freelancers, to choose a lot of things. You have so much information. It's all available uh, to you online. And the companies that are doing well, they're presenting all this information to their customers. Um, so let's go and see how it looks. If you can zoom in a little bit. Right. So here I looked for a service, logo design. So I'm looking at the result, at the results, and I already see some indication. Is this the style I like? Is this the style? Is this style is something that I like? There is a lot of indications here. You can see under, let's say, the Zip Deer logo. You can see that it's a fiber choice. I can see the price of the basic package. I can see what he's saying. The user is saying that he'll do, he'll do a modern, minimalistic, simple business logo design. And I see the user level. Obviously, there is more to learn here, but you can see the amount of indications that are driving you to make an easy decision, not to break your head over it, to, to understand everything that you need from the beginning. Let's go to the next one. Oh, yep. Okay. So here we added some advanced filters because let's say I want to choose different uh, things about the seller. I want to take only the sellers that are top rated and level two sellers, which is a leveling system like in a lot of platforms. And then maybe I need a specific language. Maybe I need a Spanish speaker. And there's obviously more, it's just a screenshot. There's all the languages more or less that they're out there. Or maybe the language is not important. So we like to give you the choice and think about your products and, and take example from every product that you see. What are you enabling your customers uh, to see? Are, are you giving them the choice? Are you giving them the right choice? Are you confusing them with too many choice? So here you can see that there is a lot of product work to, to do it right and to fit it exactly uh, for the customer. And we said that there is to look at packages and work samples, right? This one. So when you go and you look at a gig card, you see an example of, in this case, it's, it's, it's even easier because it's an example uh, of a graphic service. So you see how it looks, how you see how the logo looks and you see under it that there's a lot of little logos. You can uh, browse through the different work examples. And if you go to the right, you can see that there's a package. Uh, to the right, I mean, in the same slide, sorry. Zoom in a little bit. So, and to the right. Yeah, so there is different packages. And the idea here is to make you, uh, to make you see what you get so you'll see what you're getting for every package you pay. For the basic package, you're getting one, two, three. You're getting for the standard, one, two, three, four, five. Premium, the 10 things that you're getting. So that's how to use the platform. It's easy, it's self-explainable. And once you go on it, it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be clear, I think. Let's go to the next one. You looking for the examples or not? Well, what? Are you looking? Are you looking for the examples that were on the board formerly, or, or oh, no, 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 no? Okay. Here, here. I, I want this word. So okay. that that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, thing to do with yourself. Uh, you're now running your startups. You're now developing your startups. So now, when we talked a little bit uh, about different needs, different things about using outsourcing and using freelancers. I'd like you to write one, two, three things that are on your task shelf, right? That you know that you need uh, and what would you think to outsource? Or maybe what you have planned to outsource before. Or maybe you didn't plan to outsource before. Now you think it might be an opportunity. It would be interesting to see.
Okay. So I see a lot of things here and mo most of the things, if not everything that I see here is things that we see that startups are using uh, on Fiverr and not only startups, but uh, things like 3D animation, uh, comics, uh, which can be for personal use or for your business. Market research is something uh, that I also wrote and I see customer research, which a lot of times it goes together, if not the same thing. Explainer videos, social media expert uh, to do social media advertising, social media uh, design and social media strategy for me. Uh, everything except product management, somebody wrote. So it's, it's, it's an interesting concept and let's discuss a little bit about it. So when you're going to outsource, you also need a, you also need a strategy. And uh, this is something that uh, we'll send after. We have some uh, guides about it on how to delegate right with some people who run in their startups and their businesses uh, with delegation. They delegate more than they even do in-house. But it's true that some of the things you need to keep to yourself. Another thing that is interesting, if we're already talking about uh, outsourcing everything except uh, product management, that when you outsource, you need to do it right. And uh, the way to do it right is to understand that you need some time to write the right briefs, to send the tasks in a way that your freelancers, the people, your collaborators can understand. And you need also some time to review how the work is going so you can get the result that you want. It's not magic that you just send it and that's it. You need to know what you need. That's why writing a brief, it's a great exercise for yourself. It's just like doing a, a building a brand book. It's a great exercise to yourself to understand what is your startup about? What are your values? How do you view it? Because it makes you think about the product in a way that you're not necessarily thought uh, about it. And that's the same thing with delegating the task. So you can explain a task in a good way. You really need to understand uh, what you want. And it's not something that always uh, so easy and so simple. Sometimes, you know, in a fuzzy way, what you want to get, and, and that's a mistake that people make. So um, so a, a, good, a good thing to always do is to write a brief, even if it's very short. Um, we had someone super interesting. We have uh, offering their services on Fiverr, and his name is Rob Janoff. Rob Janoff is the designer who designed the Apple logo. So think about it. It's a person who you can't hire. You can hire him as an employee in a company, but he works as a freelancer and he works and takes different projects and they're not cheap, obviously. They're pretty expensive. But the cool thing that Rob Janoff says is that the brief that he got from Steve Jobs back in the day about the logo was don't make it cute. <laughs> that was the brief. So even an example like this, it's a basic brief, but obviously uh, there's a way to write a better brief. And we have a lot of materials about it. So you can write, uh, you can Google Fiverr delegation and you'll find uh, all of our materials about it. We write a lot of content to help our uh, community uh, to do things. Uh, one second, I want to discuss maybe some other things because there's a lot of different uh, categories, fields and different services here. So video explainers, UI designs, market research, 3D animation, uh, building a mobile app and doing music intro. A mistake that we see a lot with the um, startup founders and the founding team that a lot of time, and it makes sense, it's talented people who can do a lot of things good. And then they try to do everything themselves. But let's say you're developing a technological product. You have a breakthrough in, in, in an idea. You're developing a new process and then you try to do everything uh, by yourself. You're building the presentation and you're doing the video and you're working on the website. It's probably not the best use of your time. And your, I mean the founder and also the founding team because there's things to do. You need to find the clients. You need to develop the product. You need to work on the technology. You need to find the partners to uh, expand the technology or improve your technology or the partners to get more clients. Uh, and a lot of time when founders try to do everything themselves, the end result is that it's not the best quality because you're not a graphic designer probably, or you're not a, uh, you're not a video creator. 
uh, and maybe you're not also a, a developer that works on mobile apps, right? And maybe you're not also a musician. You can, you know, you can play the guitar a little bit, but you're not a musician. So to try to do everything yourself, it's not the best use of your time. To work two days on a presentation, it might be easier to give it to a professional. Now, the way to look at freelancers and professionals they specialize in each and every field. And if you're giving your presentation uh, to someone to improve, he worked on 100, 200 pitch decks, seen a lot of startups. There's probably something that you can learn and improve. But obviously, it's not just to, uh, you know, to send it away and expect to get a perfect result. You need to review it and work together with a professional. But think about how much time does it take to create a 20-slide presentation by yourself uh, or uh, to review it and just improve it. Same thing with the video animation to do market research, which is also something that there's a methodology to it. And the difference between somebody who's a professional in market research and somebody who just read a little bit online uh, and did the research is huge. Um, so very interesting to see uh, all of the different functionalities that you wrote. It's very close to reality. It's something that we see as well on our marketplace. Um, so let's go one back because we skipped a slide. Or maybe I'm seeing a different board. No, I wanna go to the example of a... Yes, <clears throat> let me try to get that. Just have to do it like this because uh, we had a slight change in the, just before. The... No problem. Uh, this one, huh? Um, so wait, let's one? go two slides above, two slides above. And another one down and another one down. This one. Yes. So okay. just to, con to conclude on delegation. So here you have the link uh, that hopefully will be available also after. And that's a great post by, we call her a super delegator a woman who runs several businesses with delegation and she talks about what's the right things to do from, from her perspective uh, and what's not. Um, a little bit closer. Yeah, I, pray. <laughs> I tried that, sorry, one second. And yes, this one. As we said, understand what you what you need before you delegate to other, try to write a brief. And there's a lot of guides on how to write briefs. You can Google it. Most of them are good. I checked it before. Uh, there's a lot of way to do it. Anyway, writing a brief is better than just shooting your ideas out. Um, and then make sure when you're outsourcing that you have the bandwidth or one of your employees or one of your teammates or one of your um, collaborators have the bandwidth to write the brief and send it, communicate clearly with the freelancers uh, or your collaborators and provide feedback. Sometimes you need a feedback loop or two uh, and then you get a great result. Now let's go down to some examples. So here uh, we have Gilad, uh, who is the founder and the CEO of MyHeritage. Do you guys know the startup? Recently, uh, recently they uh, they were sold uh, for a lot of money. It's a really cool and interesting startup. They're doing a lot of things from the DNA test uh, to uh, to the genealogy tree. And during the Corona, they even took a lot of their labs and uh, transformed it into Corona uh, test labs. Uh, and they also participated in this. The cool thing. Uh, to see about them that they, we realized that they're using Fiverr in a huge scale, doing a lot of big projects with Fiverr. And if you look under his image, you can see the type of services that uh, Gilad was doing on Fiverr, Gilad and his, and his team. So they're an international uh, startup that works in a lot of languages. So the interesting thing in a platform that work in 160 countries is that you can take translators, but and here it's something very interesting to understand. So uh, let's take some, I'm, I'm located in Israel. 
So I can do a translation to English and I can do a translation for, to French and I can do a translation to Russian um, from Israel. I would need, if, if I'm going to do it the old way, I'm going to look for the person in Israel and Israeli who speaks English like in a perfect way that he can translate uh, English materials for me. I need to find the person living in Israel who speaks French who can translate and the person who lives uh, in Israel and speak Russian. And, and let's think about every other market. If I want to do it, every project I need to translate to 10, 20, 30 languages, uh, it's going to be very expensive because we're paying for that exclusivity and for that expertise of the person who's living around us and, uh, and knows how to speak all those foreign languages or to do that market research. So the cool thing on a global platform that I can easily find a person in France to translate to, to French, a person in Russia to translate to Russian and a person uh, in the UK, the US or wherever in Australia or South Africa to translate uh, to English. Uh, so that's a, that's a very interesting thing that you have one place where you can get to the people right away. So again, same thing with market research and a lot of other services where you can just find the people locally. Uh, content writing. So again, you can do it in different languages. You can do it, uh, you can do it in one language. And there's also something that, uh, that, that has to do with what languages do you speak and where you're uh, located, voiceovers. So there's a lot of companies that do in their product and then they have a voiceover, they have a video uh, that explains about their product and then they need to translate it to a lot of languages and they need somebody to narrate it and to be their voiceover artist in a lot of different languages. Think about the price uh, to pay when you're doing it all with local experts that speak different languages or when you can just find people around the world. Um, video editing and animation, so a lot of things uh, uh, they did on Fiverr and continue doing. So that's a startup that we love and that grew together with us. Let's look at another uh, example. Uh, so we have Bjorn, I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, and he has the Security Squad, which is an interesting startup and also an educational uh, company. Uh, and he created video games with Fiverr. So it's a lot of things. It's also the code, the development, but it's also the graphics creating uh, the characters it's doing the voiceover and their uh, sounds it's the background sounds for the games i used to play the games i think like the first call of duty and other games so think about all the sounds and all the graphics and creating the 3d 3d world so we have an entire category of uh, video uh, and game development super fascinating to me also how it expanded uh, other services uh, that Bjorn uh, used is articles, blog posts, a lot of writing, uh, ebook editing. So a lot of time you want to write in different languages. So let's say you want to write in English. It's your only language. For a lot of us, it's not our native language. It's always good to take somebody who's proficient and to go over the materials. It's worth the money in this case because you want to look professional. Uh, you want your materials to look good. You don't want to have uh, different mistakes. Um, and that's something that you can now do easily. SEO and other services, I think most of the services that uh, the guys here use, it's things that you wrote. Um, and I wanna, I wanna show you a development that we had in our product that was developed uh, based on our, on our customers' needs. So yeah, yeah you can go to, to Fiverr Business Mm. this here yeah and then the next one after this um there's no next one because we didn't add more frames so i need to do it via the the, the slide deck from okay okay, okay. let's do it from the slide mm -hmm. this yeah. So here, just to show you a development, because again, I can bring you our own example and it's something that we went through not so long ago. We developed a new product called Fiverr Business. And why did, why did we decide to develop it? Because we got feedback from our customers. We're working uh, on Fiverr in Teams. When you develop every 
a, one of those assets that we discussed, let's say our explainer video, our product uh, video or branding video, or when we're building our website or we're doing UI design, it's usually a task that more than one person does. A lot of time it's entire task forces or product teams that are working on those different assets, or there are several people from the uh, brand team, from the marketing team, from the uh, video uh, and graphic design uh, execution teams. So when you need to collaborate with different people, um, now you have the options. We decided to develop it. Another thing that really pushed it was the corona. People started working from home and they said, we can't just show our computers and screen. We need to send uh, print screens and so on. So we thought, why wouldn't we allow collaboration tools on Fiverr for businesses? And with time, as we saw more and more businesses and bigger businesses coming to Fiverr, we decided uh, to develop this product. And this is also the product that we're offering for startups because the, the intensity uh, that startups are working with. So we're seeing even the founding team, even if you're a startup of, of, of five, six, seven, maybe even smaller or bigger as the initial team. So this product was developed for teams within businesses and maybe even bigger businesses, but startups are working as the basic team. And this is a phase that I'm sure you're all familiar with. When we're starting our startup, when you're doing our first product, everybody has a say. Everybody is looking through every asset. If we're creating a flyer, we're building our first landing page, we're creating our pitch deck, everybody are looking at it. So also when you are delegating to a freelancer, let's say you're delegating your pitch deck, you wrote the ideas, now you want somebody to design it. We'd want everybody to look at it. So now we can do it uh, through the platform. Uh, and another thing that is really, uh, we find really valuable here is the fact that there's 24 seven live chat where Fiverr employees can recommend you the best freelancers and sellers. And where we see it a lot with startups, with startups, it's always like cool, urgent stories. It's, there's a new opportunity. One investor told me to go the next day and meet with the other investor. And only if he approves my business plan, I'm going to invest. So now we need to adjust our pitch deck. Do you know the situation? It's interesting for me uh, to hear in the end if you've been to the situation. You need to adjust everything. You did a lot of research. Uh, let's say you aim to the US, but now your opportunity comes uh, from the UK or from a different country, or you have another opportunity there. So you need to adjust everything. So here people come and they use the market research or they use the different designs or they use a voiceover just to change the language. There's a lot of interesting cases and we want to, to provide the opportunity to do it 24-7 uh, at any given time. So that's something that startups uh, are using for those urgent things a lot of times that they need. Um, so that's Fiverr Business. This is something that you, you'll all also uh, get. And to conclude, let's go, uh, let's go down. So first of all, something cool that you can do. You can take your phones, you can take the cameras and you can open it with your cameras. That will lead you to the Miro benefit page where we give you a 20% coupon and where we give you Fiverr business uh, for every startup here. So you will have this opportunity to do whatever you need uh, with freelancers and we hope that it, it will help. Uh, I'm sure it will. So here you have- there's also, there's also a link on the board and I will show you in one second when we close this presentation where this link is. Cool. And so so that now, now you have a way to do it, but another thing that's important and let's go down here is some of the things uh, that we as Fiverr follow through that I personally uh, work by uh, is, one, let's discuss the, the three books that we see here. Uh, and it relates to everything that we talked about of understanding what do you want to delegate to your mission statement and how you define and how you put in words what you are doing, what your values are and everything. So there's a great book by uh, Simon Sinek, Start With The Why. And if you feel like you don't have the time and you want a short summary, you can Google his name uh, and you'll find the TED Talk uh, where you're discussing it. I'm pretty sure that most of you or a lot of you have seen it because it's super popular, but there's, there's a good reason for it because it's a great exercise uh, to do it also with what you're doing. 
why am I doing it? Uh, how am I doing it? And what am I doing? Um, then another great book. Um, by the way, I see some reactions here, the four hour work week. It's also a good book. It's true. There's a lot of good books and it was hard to choose three, but I think for startups, especially in early stage, when you're building your strategy, when you're deciding how, you, how you're going to operate, uh, those books are, they're a must. Okay. Uh, so Zero to One, it's a book by Peter Thiel. Uh, and it's a book about, he talks about how they started PayPal. And I don't know if you heard about the PayPal bunch. If you haven't, you should, because another guy who was there, it's Elon Musk. Uh, and it's amazing to see how from the same company, so many uh, amazing company evol companies evolved. Uh, and another great book that became pretty much the, the standard is The Lean Startup. Uh, so this book evolved and this idea evolved uh, by Eric Rice uh, and the Lean Startup, uh, the Lean Practices, uh, they're implemented everywhere, I believe. Um, so best practices. We said that there's a lot of resources out there. Part of what, what is happening here is the resources, resources that you're getting. So Miro has a great program for startups. You're getting credits and you're getting a great tool. At Fiverr, we give you uh, discounts and we give you Fiverr business. Uh, there's a lot of other companies that have great knowledge, tools, and programs for, five, uh, for uh, startups where you can also benefit a lot when you can get credits more or less on any platform that is uh, widely used. So it's worth the little research. Find all the resources that are uh, free or discounted for you and use them. Uh, think about the assets that you need and build a plan and create those assets. So when we talked about assets, it's what's the most important for your business. Do you need a UI? If you need a UI, do it right. Do you need a website? Do you need digital presence? Do you need a lot of content? Do you need uh, your pitch deck? Do you need your idea and your business plan uh, a little bit improved and polished? So have the assets that you need. So when the opportunity comes or another opportunity comes, so you won't be with, uh, not, with work that is not good enough to show. Uh, you have a lot of things to do. And there is a notion, and we're talking about uh, point number three here. Uh, there is this notion that now we'll build a lot of things because we don't have the manpower. Fake it till you make it and a lot of other uh, uh, sentences that people say. But once we'll raise money, we'll have the time to do everything. So now think about it. When you're gonna raise, if you or when you raised your first million, three, five, or ten million, do you have time to stop everything and start redoing uh, everything you need from the basic to rebuild your website so it's gonna be good and it's gonna be with SEO and everything you need? Uh, is it now the time to stop uh, and rebrand yourself and and uh, and ask the why and the how and to start writing your message from start? You won't have time for this because once you'll raise money, you'll need to deliver. You need to improve your product. You'll need to go to the market. Once you raise money, a lot of time, you're going out of stealth mode and you're already in competition. So it, you'll need to recruit people. You need to work on more projects. So there is a way to do it on budget and, and there is a playbook to what startups need. So create it. Outsource what you need. It's also a great uh, exercise for you to understand your business from the beginning Again, plan, plan the operation. Try to always have a plan. Don't just go with the flow. Uh, and like with every product and MVP, test and iterate. Test and iterate. One of the things that freelancing gives you is the fact that you can, you don't need to develop everything from the start. You can have professionals uh, to your prototype. You can have professionals help you with the code that you need. Um, and, and not on a big budget. You don't need to wait until you raise all this amount of money. Um, so I hope those things uh, and the exposure to Fiverr and, and, and this notion of freelancing and outsourcing and delegating your tasks so you can run quicker uh, and grow your startup. I hope it helped you. So just um, for the people that are still want to get to the Fiverr discount that they just open especially for you. Um, you can click on this button on the on the board and there you can then uh, go to get your Fiverr discount. Let me just refresh the board one time. 
And then we will go into the questions in soon in a uh, in a bit, um, when we also give the chance to uh, for you to connect with Ailey and with his colleague Kate from uh, Fiverr, if you want to um, connect with Ailey, you can find him on LinkedIn, Ailey Bogdan and colleague Kate uh, haas Tetler, who is the community uh, manager. And we're going into the um, questions soon. I messed up a little bit my screen. Here we go. So um, before we got to the questions, just for the people that are not part of the Miro startup program yet, Make sure that you sign up to get thousand dollars in credit. You can go to miro.com slash startups and you can get thousand um, dollars by applying as an early stage startup. Um, and we will be happy to uh, give you thousand dollars and invite you for all next upcoming events as well. Uh, we also have the opportunity to do a Miro for startup ask me anything session. So if you would like to talk with somebody of Miro, you can book a half hour in our agenda. We will have a how to Miro for startups next week. Um, where we will talk about the basics and also a little bit more difficult things that you can do with Miro. And you can also connect with me, uh, Yair Alevi, on LinkedIn. And this board stays open for you. So you can always come back to this board and you can go back to all the resources that we created here that you can share. And now let's move to the questions. And I would like to see if we got some questions already. Yes, we definitely got some questions. So. If you want to raise questions, you can raise it here in the screen, uh, in the board, and I can start asking the first questions to Ellie, um, our freelance expert. How can you retain freelancers? What would be your advice to retaining freelancers? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, and this is something that we also put an emphasis on uh, in Fiverr business, but also, also in Fiverr. So we created, we understood that you know, once you uh, find the right freelancer and once you give him the background about your company and he's the freelancer who's doing your designs or writing your content, you would want to get back to him. Uh, and for this, we have the tools, we have lists, we have the option to save and go back to the same uh, freelancer. And also in the end, you're communicating uh, with the person, you're just communicating uh, through the platform. So we see long time relationship between businesses uh, and freelancers and you know you can also say from the beginning uh, or after the first job that it did for you if you liked it there's an ongoing work here i would like i would like to come uh, back to you constantly and we even have new features like subscription uh, and, and everything else around it so people can retain their freelancers it's definitely a need and people and businesses do it all right thanks and then the next question is about which books could you recommend? You have already recommended three books. Maybe you want to add one more. Um, there is a book that I hope the translation is right. It's called uh, The Wisdom of the East. The Wisdom of the East. Uh, okay. And why? Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe it's something that, that we need to Google that it's, that's... Uh, ah, and why? Uh, that, that's the, the same name. And why? Because I think there is great... Um, there's great points there to think about. And uh, it, it's great to think sometimes about ideas that are not part of our daily work. It opens your creativity and it shows you another way of thinking. In this case, a way that a lot of people around the world uh, were, uh, are thinking or were raised on those values and those uh, concept so I think it's it's at the end it's also great for business but it's also great for yourself okay nice and this one is a tricky question why Fiverr and not Upwork we're currently using Upwork so Upwork is is another platform their concept uh, their concept is different is uh, is fine at the end it's like it's more like a staffing agency uh, a digital one uh, in Fiverr's case, if you're looking for a project-based service, so here you find a service. You're looking for the service. You're not searching uh, necessarily for, uh, for people who are doing this to find how to hire them. Uh, you're looking for a service. You have a project, now you need 
your graphic design, so you have the right person. Now you need a translation, so you have somebody who's skilled at this service. So at Fiverr, it's gigs, and gigs are uh, service-based. So you're purchasing the service that you need. The platform is adjusted, uh, so you can find services. Uh, with Upwork and other platforms, uh, it's different. We even called it, and, and we defined a new concept here. It's called service as a project. And this is something you can find uh, only on Fiverr. So it's just, it's different approaches. Okay, thanks. Uh, can you hire on Fiverr based on hourly rate? Fixed packages are inflexible enough for a lot of tasks. So definitely uh, there is more than the packages. And this is what, so the packages and the gig, it's for you to see what are the abilities, what service uh, can this freelancer provide to you? If you need something different than the package or something customized to you, and we have a lot of cases like this, you just write to the freelancer and he gives you a custom offer. Uh, so for everything that is not exactly as the gig is, uh, although it covers a lot, you get a custom offer from the uh, freelancer. You just write to them and uh, they return with a custom offer, which includes the price and everything. All right, cool. I got my normal screen back. That's great. Um, then do you accept new freelancers to your team? I don't, to, un I don't uh, completely uh, understand the question. So maybe so, in so your I'll answer, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer the two options. Uh, so if we, if at Fiverr, new freelancers can come and be freelancers on Fiverr, definitely. And this is happening every day, every second, even a uh, new talent is coming to Fiverr. And, also in my team, I'm using freelancers. For a lot of the things uh, that we're doing, a lot of the assets, we use freelancers. If you look at the Fiverr office, a lot of the things are uh, made on Fiverr. Uh, and also a lot of our designs, a lot of our flyers, the banners, a lot of our commercials, uh, it's made on Fiverr. Mm -hmm. All right, so practice what you preach. Um, this well, was a Exactly, great... I'll, I'll even give you an example, by the way, from, uh, from Corona. Uh, so when Corona hit, a lot of our customers, which were SMBs, they got hit, right? It was people who, who had in-store traffic and they were selling some digitally, but maybe most of their business was in-store or half-half. And then all of a sudden they lost the in-store traffic and they had to adjust quickly. Uh, okay. So we even, created, we even created a website with a lot of content and a lot of how to and a lot of guides. We did it on a, sep sever a separate brand from Fiverr, we called it SMB Help. So this mm -hmm. website was developed with a Fiverr uh, freelancer. So we can do it quick right away. And it was also a really uh, great experience for us. Nice, all right. And then this was a great intro. Can we get some best practices? And I think you already said that you have a lot of resources. Um, I will be sharing also the, 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 the people that joined today. So you will be able to send it to them. Um, I think you will be able to send some resources, right, Eli? Definitely, definitely. I'll send the articles, uh, so we'll have it. Uh, we can add it to the presentation, right, and people can uh, can access it. Yeah, so so there there's a lot of content about it. And also mm -hmm. you can Google Fiverr guides, and then you'll okay. find how-tos on on everything. But we'll put it, we'll put it here, so it'll be available always. Okay, so Fiverr guides, you said. Fiverr guides, cool. And then, um, is there any other talk course you have on best practices? So how can they learn more besides um, the resources, but so, real talks? So, so Fiverr guides, it's one thing. There's a lot of content there and you can search, mm -hmm. it's searchable. Uh, so that's a great resource. Another one is our blog. And that's most of the topics that, are, that people are discussing. Uh, and a lot of uh, the content that, that uh, we put out. And another great thing there is we have uh, a platform, which is like a separate product on Fiverr, which is called Fiverr Learn. And in the, in the landing page that we created for you, you'll see that you're getting also 30% off any digital course that you have in Fiverr Learn. Um, and there's, and there's a lot of different courses there about almost anything. So um, website building and, oh, you're opening it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna send it now to uh, put it at the question at the board. So if you click on this block here, you can also go directly to this landing page that they created, where you can see um, the TriViver business and the uh, resources articles that they created specifically for your target. Okay, great. So you can click on this blog here, block, block. Um, okay, then moving further. Um, so that's great because people want to have um, more insights. How does your platform help avoid plagiarism and remove liability for the buyer? So th there's terms of services, uh, terms of service that cover it between the sellers and Fiverr and buyers and Fiverr. Uh, but something you can do if you have something super sensitive, let's say, uh, some, some sensitive information, you can always sign an NDA with a freelancer. It's not a problem. It's something that, that uh, businesses, startups do. Uh -huh. uh, you sign an NDA and that's it, just like you do with any other freelancer. So you can sign it also directly with the freelancer. And do you have them for already pre-made that they can just fill in a, a template, uh, an NDA? No, we, do, we, don't, have, we don't have it uh, pre-made, but an NDA, you can, you can Google it and download the basic NDA. It pretty much covers um, most, of the, most of the cases. And you can, obviously, if you have a legal department or somebody who uh, consulting you on, on legal, so you can just ask them to draft an NDA for you. Okay. And is, there's also a question regarding the other side. Is there some training to become a beginning freelancer? And um, definitely. Uh, what would be the... So the, the training to become, to become a, a freelancer, you can find it on Fiverr Learn. And, you know, if maybe you can enter Fiverr Learn for a second. You can, yeah. just, uh, you can just write uh, Fiverr Learn and you'll find it or learn Fiverr. And I will copy also the link to that. So yes. here, as you can see, you have courses and you have programs to train you on a variety of subjects on marketing and graphic design, which it, in graphic design, it's also courses in specific softwares like Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, mm -hmm. Photoshop, uh, or video. Uh, it would be Adobe Premiere and other softwares. Uh, how to write, how to storytell, so how to uh, how to do voiceovers. Uh, so there's a lot of materials there that are good both for freelancers and both for professionals uh, and and your staff in your startups in your companies. So if you want to do things yourself or if you want to manage and delegate better, so you need to you need to know what you're delegating. So there's social media. Uh, advertising and Facebook advertising and here building engagement across uh, different platforms and so on. Okay. Uh, so there is a lot of courses here. And again, uh, the, the Miro startup community get 30% off of every course. You have the coupon on the landing page. Yes. And also here, if you click on this, you'll go directly there. All right, then we're moving over to the last couple of questions. Um, All right. That is not really a question. I think allow people to ah. team to complete a project. But it's a great point. And this is okay. also a feedback that we got both uh, from our sellers and our buyers. Let, let's give an example. So when you want to create a product video or a branding video, so you will need the video editor or the person to film you and the video editor. And then maybe you'll need a script. Probably you'll need a script and maybe some voiceovers uh, on top of it. Uh, so we have an option that's called Fiverr Studios and you can see them, they're marked as studios. It's when somebody takes the lead, let's say the video editor, and then he teams up with other uh, freelancers and then they deliver a project. Same thing could be with website building. Somebody is building the website, the other person designs it and another one doing the micro copy and content. So we have studios like this. Okay. Yeah, and I think it relates to this. We can include different people on the same project so we can get more ideas like a content market agency. De definitely, uh, definitely. So when you see studio uh, on a gig, 
and you can do a simple search and then you'll mm -hmm. see this badge if i'm not mistaken it's purple uh, and okay. so you know you know that it's a studio and on the right you'll see who are the participants in the studio okay all right thank you if you have still more questions for Eli, you can still put them down here and um i got a question of about Miro, is there a template to make a brand book here? No, but it would be awesome if Fiverr could make a template on brand book because uh, we are working with Fiverr together on uh, different um, this different parts, uh, not only with startups. So for the people that don't know Miro so well, we have a template library and you can click on it via the template icon. And then these are our own made templates we have over 700 and we also have then if you go all the way down the Miro verse and this is user generated templates that are made by big companies like zoom webex salesforce also a lot of small individual consultants that have great templates so it would be awesome to have one here um, from fiverr so that's a good idea because uh, we are not the experts so it would be better if um, uh, fiverr would make that so this is an invitation for uh for Ailey, could you please create a nice template for us uh, in the Miroverse Definitely. about, about uh, a brand book? Is there more questions on Fiverr and Miro? If not, I will go back to the end of the, just to make sure that everybody got it, how to reach. So here at the end, you can click on this link. You will directly be sent to the Fiverr business page where you get the discount specifically for people that were at this workshop. Ailey and Kate are here to connect with you. Just click on there. I will unlock this. And then you can click on their um, LinkedIn. Same accounts for all these blocks here. If you wanna connect with uh, Miro for a half hour mentor session on Miro, if you want to join our House of Miro for Startups and you can connect with me here and the last thing, miro.com slash startups to get $1,000. Um, I would like to then, if there's no new questions came up, no, I would like to give the, uh, first of all, thank uh, a lot, uh, Ailey, for uh, being part of this uh, very interesting and um, insightful um, webinar on delegation. It was a new subject for me. It's not something that you uh, hear so often in incubators and accelerator programs. So it's really cool to uh, learn. I think that a lot of people got really excited and wanted to learn more, which is a good sign. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you, Ailey and Kate for um, setting this up and to all the people that are here, thank of course, thanks for joining us today and hope to see you in a new Miro or Fiverr event, of course. Feel free to uh, contact us um, via LinkedIn, whatever, if you want to stay in touch. We will post also the recording, but it will be first um, branded not by a freelancer, but by our own brand team. And we will then put it online on the Miro um, startup event page. So it will be online, but it will take two, two weeks usually before that uh, it's back. So I see still some things in the chat. Um, yes, only thanks, no questions. So if Ellie, you want to say something else to the group before we uh, um, shut it down for today? So I want to wish you all uh, great luck. And by the way, Yair, you mentioned incubators and accelerators, which is also a resource that you have. And today there's more than ever and both Miro and their startup program and both the accelerators and the incubators. They're a great source of knowledge for all uh, the benefits that you can get on different platforms with different products. So please use it. Uh, and, and again, I wish you all a great success. We try to partner with every startup enabler if it's an accelerator, if it's an incubator, and if it's a great uh, startup program uh, like you have here. So Yair, thank you for inviting us. Yes, it was my pleasure. And uh, I got one more question. The board will stay open forever. So you don't, if you just save the link, you will always be able to reach out until uh, Miro doesn't exist anymore, but, but until then it stays open. So uh, don't worry that you will lose the content. Okay, then thank you. It's late for you already. It's uh, I think uh, nine, uh, Eight o'clock in Tel Aviv. So, um, Pipi Valley Shon and Litaud. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.